There's a picture of a chimpanzee next to her, and it's all right. And this is not hidden or some, you know, French thing. This is the Tennessee Republican Party, and it's all right. This is, should be frightening. So, here's what we have to do. Damn it. This particular organization, Young Democratic Socialists, you do whatever you can, in every way that you can, and all of you devote more time to building this organization. Building. Building more members, get out there and do everything that you can to build this institution. And as you are building it, make sure that you build it in a way in which you are self-sufficient. Do not rely on the kindness of strangers. Do not rely on little tiny bitty bitty things of money. Make your own business, make your own exchanges, but you build this organization. Because the reason that we were cut down is because we actually built our organization for poor people. For poor people. There's no big organization for poor people in this country. There's no organization to really protect working families that have any power. There is no organization to protect children except if you want to privatize anything to do without children. And there certainly isn't any organization to protect old people because it ain't the AARP, that big insurance company of America. The reason that you have to build your organization and make it as big and as powerful as you can. It's because you need to get into real battles. And here's what I think you need to do. And you need to make sure that you get into this battle. The next big battle that's coming, whether healthcare lives or dies, and I think it will live along in some retarded, you know, I said it, retarded thing, because that's what it's going to be, this mishmash bill. Immigration is the next big battle. Yep. Immigration, immigration, and immigration. And the reason that this is so important is, you know, here's the secret. We're getting ready to be a majority, minority country. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be like South Africa. More black people than white people. <laughs> <laughs> Get yourself together. Get strong, get big, and get in this battle. Get in this battle. Because again, it's all about money. How this country works. Who we have in this country. And the fact that the fear of a black planet that's being played out in the United States today, the future of our country is people of color. And how that's going to change our psyche and our economics. This is why folks are grabbing so hard to change the economic um, paradigm because we get ready to have a majority country of people of color. And the fear of a black planet is real. So, when they talk about jobs, jobs, Think about what Joe talked about in terms of immigration. What kind of jobs and for who? Who will be producing those jobs and for who? How many of these jobs will they be and will they be fair, open, 
uh, jobs with benefits or and, 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 and living wages, or will we continue to accept the exploitation of immigrants? And my challenge to black folks and to people of color and civil rights folks are this. The face of immigration needs to be a lot blacker than it is. Because once they can frame the immigration debate, it's about Latinos crossing some mythical border when in fact we have second and third generation black folks in this country who come from immigrant families, but they're not standing up and marching with their Latino brothers and sisters and saying, I am an immigrant too. Marcus Garvey would be ashamed of you. So, young democratic socialists, join this immigration war. Black people, young black people that have been put in the vast, vast, vast of African Americans, join. Don't march alongside. Don't march in the back. Be right out front. Because that will be the battle for our democracy. That will be the battle for the kind of government that we have. That will be an economic battle of epic proportions. Immigration, self-sufficiency, and the people united. You know what I mean? The bad right-wing conspiracy. Okay, I'll, I'll, uh, I'm going to go quick. So you get a chance to either talk or eat lunch. Um, fantastic to be here with uh, with you, and especially with Bertha, uh, definitely one of the true heroes of mine. Um, so let, let me just quickly tell you what we're trying to figure out, because I think it's quite relevant to what uh, DSA and YDS have been talking about. Um, it, it's hardly a new idea for people on the left to say, well, it would be good uh, to have a party of one's own. Uh, and it's always a very difficult and, uh, proposition. And everybody knows why, right? We live in America. We don't live in more advanced countries, South Africa, Germany, wherever, uh, with more advanced voting systems. In the U.S., we have what's called a winner-take-all, first-past-the-post voting system, which is really bad for minor parties, for third parties. Everybody's aware of this. How many people live outside New York in this room? Ah, the vast majority. Good. Um, so the reason it's very hard to form a political party that might be interested in advancing the interests of working people and poor people and their allies is because most people are not stupid. And if you say to them, I want you to vote for this noble but doomed candidate uh, with no chance of ever actually accomplishing anything, but I want you to dedicate your life to that project, they might say, I don't know, that, that, that's okay for one election, but that's not really a affordable strategy if you ask them to do that again and again and again. So the, the, the question that faces people like you, us, uh, who want to make nonviolent change, uh, is how do you, and, and who understand that a political party is a uniquely powerful way to make nonviolent change in a democracy, what do you do? Uh, you move to New York. You, you, have to live, you have to have better voting rules. There are about half a dozen states in America that have, in an essence, uh, what, what political scientists call modified proportional representation. When you uh, vote in New York or any of these other uh, handful of states, Barack Obama ran for president as a Democrat. But in New York, he also ran for president as the nominee of the Working Families Party. Um, so election day rolled around and he got several million votes as a Democrat, but he got several hundred thousand votes uh, as the nominee of the, Demo of the, of the WFP. And it's, it, he didn't need the votes to win, but he was happy to get them. It's better to think about this at a state legislative or congressional level. Firth is running for state assembly. Schwartz is her Republican opponent. This is a hypothetical. <laughs> we say we interview both candidates. Firth is a Democrat. She's so-so. We say to her, but we like you better than we like him. We say, vote for Lewis, but vote for her on the working families line and send her a message about health care, housing, jobs, climate change, immigration, you name it, whatever the salient issues are in that district. Election day rolls around and Bertha gets 